Lee, it's Pam with 44 Marketplace and Creative Finishes by Pam. I am here today to chat with you guys about wood graining. Um, I have had so many questions about wood graining that I decided that we would do a live about it tonight. Um, if you guys have more questions, please hit me up and let me know. We're going to talk um, about several different ways to do it. Hi, Jessica. Um, my prayers are with everybody in the uh, path of this storm. I looks like it has the potential to, to be kind of a mess. So, um, tonight, like I say, we're going to talk about wood graining. I'm going to give everybody a chance to jump on and um, just kind of get you caught up. Uh, also, several people have asked me about doing a creative learning group. I have no plans whatsoever to do a creative learning group. I love helping you guys learn how to use the products. I don't mind answering your questions, but I got to be honest with you. I have no plans to um, to set up a creative learning group. It is a time commitment that I want everybody to get your money's worth, and I, I give it to you for free. Then I feel like you get your money's worth. Um, and I run a business. I paint every single day, pretty much seven days a week, and. Um, last week I was so swamped I didn't get to do any lives. So if anybody asks, I'm sorry, but I am going to keep doing my lives. You can just watch my lives for free. All right, so tonight we're going to talk about graining because a lot of people have questions about graining. Hey, everybody. Hey, Tracy, you're not late. I'm giving everybody a chance to get on. Okay, a lot of people have questions about if something's painted, how can you make it look like wood? Normally what we do is just the opposite of that. So, tonight we're going to talk about it. Um, I don't know if you can tell on this one, I did it kind of dark. But a lot of times, especially the top of a piece, you want it to look like it, it's wood. A lot of people have a hard time with um, gel stains. A, we're all a little impatient, right? I mean, I know I am. And if you're a little impatient and you don't let it dry enough and everything, then it can really be a thing. Um, so, it, you know, there's a little bit more cure time and dry time and everything with the gel stain. So I'm going to show you using one of my favorite Dixie Belle colors, my friend Lisa. And I came, um, she came up with this color and I started using it. And then Dixie Belle actually came out with it. It's called Coffee Bean. So we're going to mess around with um, this door. And I'm going to show you, I don't know if you can see... But we kind of grained this one, and I'm going to show you how we did that using brushes because not everybody has a graining tool. Now, I've had mine for so long, it looks kind of a mess, but it works fine. Um, hey, L.A., how are you? You better stay safe down there in Florida. Um, so, first of all, this is a graining tool, okay? Um, mine are well used, and I have used them with gel stain and everything else. They look dirty, but I assure you they're clean. Um, and this. I've had mine for a long, long time. My heads snap on and off so that I can use whichever one I want. So tonight what I'm going to show you is a messy board. <laughs> I saw that you're still in PCB. Um, this was actually painted and then I was out here messing with the dogs and we ended up getting paint on here. But I don't care. We're going to grain over it anyway. But there you go. Um, this is a grain. This is using the same graining tool. You can have a short grain or a long grain. So, um, tonight I'm going to show you how we accomplish that. And then I'm also going to show you how you can do it with a chip brush. Um, the first thing I'm going to tell you is when you're looking at... Hey, Fatima! Hey, Billy! Hey, Ellen! Hey, Tracy! When you're looking the... Um, when you're looking at a graining tool, you can see how it's made. Um, most of them notch up and down, and they have little, can you see the little teeth? And they have big teeth. Can you see those? Okay. Um, this one is very similar, and it's just a smaller one. And then this one is the one, you can tell by looking at it, that I use a lot. Because I like for my wood grain to have a little bit of um, a breather, a little bit of a striation to it, so that it gives more of a feel of a true grain. Um, a lot of people get carried away with it and think that it has to be even. 
How many trees, well, I don't know if you guys have ever cut down trees. If you grew up in the South and you had wood heat, you cut down trees. They don't, in nature, they don't occur naturally. They don't occur um, in an exact pattern. So when you're doing a wood grain, you got to keep that in mind, okay? All right, so you guys don't need to see me. You need to see what we're doing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about this, a messy board, actually. All right, um... A lot of times when I do a wood grain like this, I don't leave it like this. I go back over it and and hide some of this so that it looks like it's just peeking through. So tonight what we're going to do is I'm going to drop you down so hopefully you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. All right, so tonight what we're going to do is we are going to grain this piece. And I'm hoping that it is going to sit up far enough that you can see how easy it is. Typically what I do when I'm graining, well, when all my stuff is where it's supposed to be, typically what I do when I'm graining, I get a chip brush, um, usually a ratty chip brush, um, because sometimes I need to feather in something, okay? So, what we're going to do is I just take the amount of paint that's in my lid with a nice stamp brush, and I go down through here. And I just apply my paint. Now, if you're going up against one that's already been grained, like I am with this one, you kind of want to feather it in a little bit. You don't want it to look like a real thick line. You just want a little feathery paint up against that so that it's not quite so, so solid, I guess is a good word for it. All right, now you've got to think what size graining tool are you using. So that's what I do is I hold it up against my board to make sure that I've got it wide enough so that I'm going to get a good grain on it. Um, this is great if you're trying to create a farm table look or something, um, and it's really very easy. I'm going to provide a link. I know that Amazon has the graining tools, and I think you can get them at most of the little hobby shops and stuff like that. Some of them are better than others. I'll tell you, my little graining kit, I couldn't even tell you when I, where I got it. I've had it so long. Let's see. Need a little bit more. Um, but I've had it a long time. All right. So, now, it doesn't have to be a super thick coat because you're going to pull a lot of it off. And I don't know if you realize what you're doing when you're graining. But if you can see the way this is shaped, you're going to rock it, okay? All right. I always have wipes when I'm using the paint so that I can wipe away any excess. And what you want to do is um, you're going to start at the top. And then you've got to decide do you want a long grain or a short grain. The first time I'm going to do it, I'm going to do a short grain so you can see it. And then the next one, we're going to do a long grain, okay? Okay. So we're going to start at the top, and it's going to be face down, and you're going to pull, and you just rock it back and forth. So there's what we just did, okay? All right, so now you can see that that is with a short grain. Now I'm going to show you the exact same thing, and we're going to do it with a long grain, and then we're going to leave one, actually. Okay, a lot of times when I'm doing mine, we're going to wipe our, our little tool off. Typically, after each um, pass, I wipe my tool down good. All right, we're going to start at the top, and you're just going to drag it. And what creates the grain is the dragging of the tool, okay, and the rocking of the tool. So, I don't really like that one. Back over. I like the first one better, but I'm going to show you. This is what we're going to do. It's harder for me to do it at an angle than it is when it's laying flat down. So we're going to start it again. Because my board wants to move. Okay. So now that we've got our long grain done, typically I don't like for mine to have um, just, I want mine to have also some striations in it. So I take the teeth here that you can see, and I go back over mine very lightly to create a grain. Drag it straight across or straight down, whatever you're doing. 
And there you go. You can see that I have created um, my grain. Now, if, you, if you're not happy with what you've got, you can always go back over it just like this. We're just going to put the paint right back over it. All right. So, just so you know, when you're doing it, you're going to feather it in. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the other one that we've already done. Okay? All right. We're going to go back over it one last time and we're going to leave it so you can see what it looks like. And then we're going to go on to our next thing so you can see what we're going to do with the ones that are left. All right, so there's our grain. That's what we're going to stick with because I could mess around with it all night. Now, I, like I say, I like to use this one, but there are several different choices. And for some reason, this one's just my grain of choice. And it's a very light little drag down through there. Just gives a little bit more of a pattern. Now, a lot of times when I've done this, this one's already dry, okay? When I've done this, I don't like for it to be as light as I've got it. So what I've done is I've taken another color that's very similar to what I'm doing, to what I'm using. And we're going to take a little bit of gravel road because, like I say, we started with coffee bean. We're going to take a little bit of gravel road. It's a little watery. And we're going to go over this because I want you guys to see what it looks like when you actually just kind of not really paint over it, but you, you do kind of paint over it a little. Alright, so in some cases, we want to mute it just a little. Not that we want to cover it up, but we like to make a little translucent cover over the top of it so it looks like that part of it um, has been painted over or whatever. So this way you can see this is creating the actual grain with a graining tool. And this one is we created the grain, but in some cases... Um, you just really want to make sure, yes, I have a Mr. Bottle right here, and um, I keep my brush stamp with my Mr. Bottle because um, it just works so much better for me. So do you see the difference from this one to this one? We've got these two here, and I'll tell you something else when you're doing the grains. Be mindful that you don't want them to match up. You know what I mean? You want... A wide one with a narrow, a, you want a long one with a short one and everything. Um, were I doing a tabletop, these wouldn't be so similar. I would definitely vary them more. I'm just doing these for examples for you guys to see. So now you can see this is a table, and you may even want to whitewash it afterwards or whatever. Um, but again, I am using just a basic chip brush. Um, I, I just want it to just kind of... Make it not so obvious. I love the grain, but sometimes once you see it like this and then you go over it, it really helps people to understand that it can go both ways. So that's what it is using a graining tool. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is um, a lot of times you've got a door and you want it to look like it's been grained after it's been painted. The best way to do that is by using a watery version of your paint and kind of doing um, a, uh, a color wash and then going back over it with your brush. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take our coffee bean. Like I say, I am a huge fan of coffee bean. So we're going to take our coffee bean. We're going to move this one over here. All right, we're going to take our coffee bean and we are going to... Um, 
put it on here with a little bit of our water, okay? All right. You want to you want to leave a little bit of the striations from the brush because that's going to further help your grain, okay? That's going to further enhance your grain. You don't want it to be an even color. You want it to have a little bit of um a little bit of a variance. You want it to look very organic in color. So, it doesn't take but I mean to do this whole door, I wouldn't even use a whole, I, I wouldn't even use as much coffee bean as, in, as is in my lid, okay? I've got a damp brush, and I'm just brushing it back and forth. You want to go up and down, kind of creating your own faux grain is what you're doing, okay? A lot of times when you're trying to do the color wash here, you may need to um, drag your brush the opposite direction, but then you can fix it when you get to that point, okay? Then you can drag it all in one direction, up and down. All right, so now you can see what we've done here, okay? We have given this piece a little bit of direction, okay? And like I say, we're using a ratty old brush that I love um, because it just works wonders. All right. Hey, Cindy, don't you have a birthday this week? Was yours today? Happy birthday. All right. So this is what we've done. We've gone in and we've given this some striations. And this is the side that we've already done. Can you see how it looks like a wood grain now? I wish I could get it to show up a little better for you. We have laid the groundwork for doing our wood grain, okay? By simply watering down our coffee bean and dragging our brush across there, okay? Now, a lot of times what I do with this is I also use my graining tool, but I use the one that I told you I use so much of. I use this. You're the big 50 today. Well, guess who's right behind you? I will be 50 on Saturday. Be proud. Girl, we made it this far. I tell my friends, if I'd have known I was going to make it this far, I might have taken better care of myself. <laughs> okay, so we've got this done. And what you're going to do is once it dries, then you're going to go back over and you're going to take that coffee bean that I just showed you that we used and you're going to take it full strength on your ratty old chip brush and you're going to drag it in striations again, okay? Because what that's going to do is you are going to create a faux wood grain. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. All of my Dixie Bell retailers, you guys shout out because you know that I love for y'all to, to say hello when you're on here. And remember, if you guys need something, I sell online. I know, Sandy's right behind us. Her birthday is next week. I hope to get your present in the mail today, girl, but I didn't make it. So I'm hoping tomorrow. Tomorrow's the day. You're going to love it. I know you will. All right, so we've created our striations. We're going to let this dry a little bit, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to go back in and do it. There you go, grapevine decor, antiques, and more. There you go. So see, there's another one. Stephanie is 56, October the 25th. My mother's birthday is Halloween. How fun is that? Um, all right, so we're going to let this dry just a second, and we're going to go back to this one. Now, I'm going to change out the head, and I'm going to show you what it's like with the smaller one. Sometimes this head changes out quickly, and sometimes it is difficult. There we go. Now, you guys may have a different graining tool, and yours may work differently, um, but all of them are the same premise, just a rock and drag, okay? It's very simple. It's very easy to do. And if you don't want the added relief from using the comb, then don't do it. It's fine. All right. So we're going to go in and we're going to put some more of our... Now keep in mind, it's going to do better with a damp brush all day. Another thing to keep in mind is when you are working on a piece that's very close to you, 
you need to do a little bit more detail. Whereas if you're working beams like I worked not too long ago, your green can be a little more exaggerated because they're looking at it from a very large distance. So keep that in mind. All right, so we're graining with a little baby one now. You ready? All right, so we're going to... looks a little wicked. Seemed like it didn't want to pull it off. Let's try that again. I didn't like that at all. My paint seems a little dry. Probably because it's been sitting out here open. Who would do that? Somebody that didn't know better, right? And I know better. But I've been out here playing with the dog, so what can I say? All right, we're going to go at it again. We're going to, yeah. All right, ready? Remember, don't let it just There you go. How cool is that? It was just a spaz doing it the first time. So there's a wide one, and there's the narrow one. And you can see the, the striations that usually I base coat first, and then you put either a dark on light or a light on dark so that when you actually drag your graining tool across there, you're removing part of the paint. Let me show you what the graining tool looks like so you understand what I'm saying. Um, here's the head of the one that I just took off. Can you see all of these? It's a rubber tool, and it has a lot of grooves in it. And that's what actually, as you rock it back and forth, the longer you take to rock it back and forth, the longer your grain is. So that way you can see what it's like. Um, but that's what pulls it back. See, you can see where it is. Can you guys see all of that? And like I say, it's got these little nubs up on the top side, and it's got a comb on the bottom side. But normally, I use my little extra comb because I really, I just like the relief that it adds. And see, I'll show you on this one. Um, we're going to do the big one. We're going to drag it right down the center. So you can see, can you guys see the extra little lines that it adds? And the more pressure you put on it, the more paint it will remove. So that's the other thing to think about. Like I say, I will put a link to the graining set that I use. I think that they've got one similar to it on uh, Amazon, but I'll have to look and make sure. But I'll send that. And remember, if you guys need anything, this is Coffee Bean, one of my favorites. I am happy to uh, ship anywhere. 50 anywhere in the continental United States, I should say, and there is our coffee bean, and if you spend $50 or more, you get free shipping, so there is that. Um, now we're going to go back to our piece. It's kind of dry, not completely yet, so now we're going to go back to our little piece that we were playing with because I want to show you how I do it with this. All right, so our coffee bean, we're going to go back over it full strength. We're going to go back over it because we've got full strength on here now. You don't want a perfect uh, chip brush when you're doing this. You want it to have some issues because it gives you a more varied look. And you'll notice I am not reloading the paint. This is the paint that was left over from where we were just doing our piece. Where we were adding paint onto our piece. Whew, this side looks terrible. I've been touching it while it was wet. And sometimes the best thing to do is just layer it up. I mean, I got to be honest with you. A lot of times I'll put it on and I'll let it sit. And then I'll go back in and I'll add some more. Because as it dries, it layers better. But that way you can see. I don't know if you guys can see the wood grain. But it just, it's very easy to, to make it have the striations that you're looking for. And like I say, you've got your little combs on the top side of this if you want to drag it up through there. And it'll add a little bit of relief to it. 
typically I don't when I'm doing this. Typically I just go back in and I do my little brush and I just do my striations. And remember we did a color wash on this first and we used the watered down coffee bean to use our to do our color wash. And then once that dries, then you go back over and you start layering your striations of your full strength. And that way you can make sure that you get the colors that you're looking for and the pattern that you're looking for. Can you guys see how that's building up? And you just keep going back and forth over it until you get the look that you want. And it really doesn't take long. Um, and sometimes you may want to add another color or two. Uh, sometimes you want to vary by, you know, one color or the other, but it really builds up quickly and it can make it whatever you want it to be. So I hope that has helped. Um, you can do this with a gel stain. It's very easy to use with a gel stain, uh, but there is a little bit longer cure time and you can't work it like you can when you're using uh, just the paint. And now once these dry, even though it is a, um, even though it's paint, I have injected a lot of water into my finish. So typically when I've used this much water, I wait um, until the next day before I gator hide it or anything. But you'll see that it really gator hides up well, and it's a great look for a table. So now keep in mind, this is the side that we put the color wash over, and this is the side that we didn't. So that you can see kind of what it looks like, and you get an idea of what it is. And now, usually my base coats, I use the Dixie Belle Oval. You can see it's very well loved. Um, so if you guys have questions about graining, please let me know. I will put um, some links up so that you can see the graining tool sets that they have on Amazon and the ones that I like best, um, if that matters to you. If you guys have questions, hit me up on Facebook. I know Sandy at uh, Urban Rebel has great pictures uh that is her picture that i used for this um yeah out here is a great time the crickets are wonderful aren't they i used sandy's picture for the wood graining she did it on her countertops so if you guys have questions hit me up hey heather and um i hope to be back on wednesday night and i may be back on friday night but you know how that goes i have family coming into town for a birthday party so hit me up on Facebook, and I'm happy to help when I can. Bye, guys.